Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we'll be adding and subtracting fractions that have different denominators today. That's a lot to punch into a title, but um, that's basically what this lesson will be about. We'll be talking about adding fractions, common denominators, um, and then adding or subtracting fractions. So we're going to go over the basics and show you visually what adding fractions looks like. Then we're going to go through some of the math of actually doing it. So let's look at adding fractions. What does 1 over 4 plus 2 over 4 actually mean? Well, here's a bit of a visual display. This I've colored in or shaded in one part out of 4, and I'm adding that to two parts out of 4, and that will give me three parts out of 4. So when you're adding a fraction, basically you're adding the numerator or the number on top. The denominator remains the same as you can see in this demonstration. It's still four parts, but the number of parts that you have, the total parts or the numerator, is um, is being added. One part out of four plus two parts out of four gives you three parts out of four. Now, when we're adding numbers with different denominators, this is kind of what it's going to look like. It's the same basic problem that we just did, one out of four plus one half, but it's harder to add these when you don't have the same denominator. You can't join them together. So you can't say it's one fourth and one half. So what you need to do is make the second fraction have the same denominator or make both fractions have the same denominator and then you can add them like we did in the previous question. So we're going to do that. We're going to change fractions to having the same denominator and then we're going to just add the numerator. So let's go ahead and move on to this section where we are actually finding common denominators. This should look kind of familiar if you've been watching the other videos. Um, the steps for finding a common denominator are as follows. First, you find the least common multiple of the denominators. So the least common multiple of the denominator, which is the number on the bottom. So I list the multiples of 5, I list the multiples of 8, and I find the one that is common, a number that is common between them, and the lowest common multiple or the lowest common denominator between them. Now what I need to do is convert the fractions to having the same denominator, and this is how I do that. I look at my denominator of 5 in this first fraction, 2 out of 5. I say 5 times what gives me 40? Well, 5 times 8 gives me 40. So I'm going to multiply the top and bottom of the fraction times 8. So that'll give me 16 out of 40. So now I've converted the fraction 2 fifths into the fraction 16 over 40. Now I'll look at my second fraction, 7 eighths. And I say the denominator 8 times what gives me 40? Well, 8 times 5 is 40. So to keep it a balanced an equal fraction, I multiply both the top and bottom of the fraction times 5, and that gives me 35 over 40. So this process of converting fractions so that you have the same denominator is the, the, the hardest math part of this lesson. Okay, and we're going to go through that process for the next three questions as we're looking at adding and subtracting fractions. So these are the steps we're going to follow. We're going to find the lowest common multiple of the denominators, or the LCM of the denominators. We're going to make the two fractions have a common denominator, and then we're going to add or subtract the numerators. All right, so we're going to be either adding or subtracting the numerators. So here's our question, 2 fifths plus 3 sevenths. I need to find the lowest common multiple of the denominators. So I list the multiples of 5, and I list some multiples of 7, and I identify which what is the lowest common multiple, the least common multiple, the lowest number that is in both of those lists. And in this case, it's 35. So now I'm going to convert the fractions so they both have a denominator of 35. To do that, I'll go through the same process I did before. 5 times what gives me 35? 
5 times 7 gives me 35. And if we have a challenge filling that in, you can look here. 5 times 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, and there's 5 times 7. So having that list of, of multiples up there is, is a helpful tool for us. We're going to multiply the fraction both top and bottom times 7, and that will give us the fraction of 14 over 35. I'm going to move on to my second fraction. 7 times what gives me 35? 7 times 5 is 35, so I multiply the top and bottom of the fraction times 5, and I get the fraction of 15 over 35. Now I need a little bit of space here, so I'm going to clear out the middle, because this question of adding 2 fifths plus 3 sevenths, we now need to rewrite. I need to write it out as 14 out of 35 plus 15 out of 35. I've just rewritten both fractions with the denominator of 35. And when you add those two numbers, you get 29 out of 35. So that's the, the answer of adding 2 fifths plus 3 sevenths gives you 29 out of 35. Let's look at a question that involves subtraction. I have 7 ninths minus 5 twelfths. To solve this question, I need to find a common denominator and then subtract the numerators. So I'll need to find the lowest common multiple of the denominators. By the way, that's called the least common denominator, or LCD, um, if you're looking for an abbreviation of that. So I list the multiples of 9 and the multiples of 12. I highlight the lowest or least common multiple of both of those numbers and then convert the fractions to having that same denominator. 9 times what gives me 35? 9 times 4. So I multiply the top and bottom times 4 and get my new fraction of 28 out of 36. 12 times what gives me 36? 12 times 3. So I multiply the fraction 3 times the top, 3 times the bottom, and that will get me the fraction of 15 over 36. Let's clear out a little bit of space and rewrite my, uh, my subtraction question. 7 ninths is equal to 28 over 36. 5 twelfths is equal to 15 over 36. So now I'm subtracting 28 minus 15. And the denominator of 36 is going to remain the same. So I end up with 13 36 That's how you solve addition or subtraction questions um, when you have a different denominator. You get the common denominator, and then you subtract or you add the numerator. One more question I'm going to do, and that has to do with mixed numbers. Look at our question here. Um, 2 and 3 sevenths plus 4 and 1 fifth. Adding mixed numbers like that, for me, the, I found the easiest way to do this is to add the numbers separately, 2 plus 4, and then add the fractions. And, and for me, I found that that works. So, um, so we're going to basically ignore the numbers 2 and 4 and just treat it like we've treated every other question. Let's do it. Find the least common multiple of the denominators. I list my multiples of 7 and 5. And the least common denominator will be 35. I have to multiply 7 times what? 7 times 5. So I end up with a fraction of 15 over 36. Now I go to my second fraction. Some 5 times what gives me 35? 5 times 7. So I multiply the top and bottom of that fraction, and it gets me 7 out of 35. So I rewrite my question. Now, notice when I rewrite the question, I include the number 2 and the number 4, um, but I also have the fraction written, the new fractions written with their common denominator. So 2 and 15 35ths plus 4 and 7 35ths, I'm going to add the numerators of 15 and 7 and get 22. I'm going to add the numbers 2 plus 4 and get 6, and the denominator remains the same. So that's how we add mixed numbers with different denominators. It would work exactly the same with subtraction. Just subtract the numerators, numerator minus numerator, and then you would take this number minus that one. Um, so it would work the same with addition as it does with subtraction. Quick recap. 
Adding fractions, we went over what it looks like visually. You have to have the same denominator for it to work. So we showed how to get a common denominator and then how to use the de common denominator for adding or subtracting fractions. Hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.